I got married a month ago and I'm no longer talking to my husband's best friend, Julie, 30 female. Neither is he. My husband and I find what she did distasteful and are looking to see whether we're wrong. So we planned a kid-free wedding. The only kids welcome to attend were my daughters from my previous marriage, a tween and a teen. Julie has three children, a pre-tween and two tweens. We also had a limited amount of seating available due to pricing and food catering, so I only had 50 seats, and therefore I told Julie she couldn't bring her kids, but she and her husband were both invited. Julie told me very early on that she doubted she could find a babysitter, and made it clear she refused to hire someone they didn't know, but told me she would do what she could. About two weeks before the wedding, she confirmed that her mom was watching the kids. But then, two days before the wedding, she messaged me and said that her mom bailed on babysitting for one reason or another. I can't remember what I said in response. But anyway, the wedding day comes and only 28 people of the 50 show up. I posted on Facebook saying, I have 22 extra seats at my wedding. Message me if you want to join us on our special day. I figured Julie would be the first to reach out, but she never did. She care reacted to my post, but that was it. She missed the wedding. My husband was very upset because this was his best friend and he wanted her there. Anyway, I reached out to her a few days later and told her that Wesley and I were very hurt that she didn't come and that this was our big day and we needed her. She responded, Did you expect me to leave my kids in the car by themselves? At home? At a hotel? I said, No, I expected you to reach out to me and ask if your kids could come after knowing that no one else showed up. She says, OMG, okay, so you have a kid-free wedding and you expected me to look like an idiot by asking you to make an exception for my children to attend instead of just messaging me directly? My husband and I immediately blocked her after her hostile responses. He's feeling pretty crappy and thinks we may have overreacted. I think we're in the right, however. Am I the idiot for expecting my friend to ask me if her kids could come to my child-free wedding? You are the idiot. Julie respected your choice for a child-free wedding. At no point did you say, hey, we have 22 spare places so we can accommodate kids if you have them. Any normal person would assume you were adhering to the no child room and were offering 22 adult places. You're the ones who should have contacted her to offer to relax your own rules. Now you're angry because she did exactly what you told her to. Your husband should be feeling crappy because you both were crappy to Julie. But no one came to our wedding, OP tearfully states. I can't imagine why. I think OP expected Julie to beg her for an invite. I wonder how many other areas of her life OP sucks in if she thinks she's in the right here and had almost half her wedding guests no show. Right? Either there was a major natural disaster like an earthquake or a hurricane, or this couple behaves like this all the time and nearly half the people they know just couldn't face it on the day. Literally, only a bit more than half the invite showed. I'm not really surprised, I probably would have bailed on them too. If only half the people showed up to a wedding, it's very telling on how many people avoid OP. Julie got a better outcome, and OP's most important day was a wake-up call for her. It's also so weird of the OP to post on Facebook the day of the wedding saying, Hey, I have 22 seats, message me. Did she expect there to be a race to get a seat before the last one got snatched up? It's giving the vibe of an ad on the Facebook marketplace for an item you really think is a hot commodity, like, get it before it's gone. Who in their right mind would see an impersonal post like that on Facebook and think, I was not invited to this wedding, but now that I've seen this public broadcast of a Facebook post, let me message the bride to ask for an invite so I can then rush and get dressed up right now to attend this event that is already underway. No thanks? Who would do that? The biggest surprise here is that 28 people actually showed up to see you idiots get married. I, 35 male, and my wife, 35, have been married for six years. Some background, several months ago, my wife gave birth to our daughter. I'll call her Sadie. Ever since my wife gave birth, she's been getting increasingly rude and refuses to do any work around the house and says she's still healing from giving birth, even though she always goes out with her friends. Three months ago, my wife's stepsister, Hannah, 25, called my wife and asked her if she could temporarily move in with us. She lived in a crappy apartment building, and tenants recently had to leave due to the unsafe conditions. Hannah didn't have enough to get another place right away, hence the asking. My wife seemed very eager to let Hannah move in, despite always claiming they never get along. They came to the agreement that she would help with Sadie in exchange for staying with us rent-free so she could save up for a deposit on a proper apartment. Everything was fine at first. Hannah has ADHD and took a week to adjust to living with us. During that week, she did all the chores my wife had been neglecting without us asking her to, 
I tried to tell her she didn't have to do all of them, but my wife waved me off and said Hannah's ADHD makes her want to do it. Hannah backed her up. After she cleaned something, my wife would thank Hannah a lot. I thanked her as well, but my wife did it constantly, which seemed strange to me. My wife dismissed my questions and said it was normal to do with people with ADHD. Since then, my wife has pushed all childcare and any household chores I don't do onto Hannah. She's also been increasingly rude to Hannah and yelling at her if she makes a mistake on the first try of doing something. I tried to intervene when I was at home, but my wife would accuse me of wanting to let Hannah lay around the house being lazy because she was our word. She and I got into a huge fight about her using that word to describe Hannah and we didn't speak for a few days. My breaking point came when I found out my wife had been making Hannah pay her rent and buy baby supplies. I paid all the bills and the money Hannah had been giving my wife was not going towards the house. My wife was using it to go out with her friends. My wife also made Hannah pay for food. I usually give my wife the money for food and she bought snacks for herself with Hannah's contribution. I had another fight with my wife where she said Hannah was lazy and if she didn't like her rules then Hannah could sleep on the street and get out of her house. That's when I told my wife it's my house as she doesn't pay any bills and at this point doesn't do anything but be as lazy as she accuses Hannah of being. I would rather live with Hannah. My wife got quiet and has been refusing to talk to me or Hannah for the past few days and I'm starting to think I crossed a line. Am I the idiot? Edit to add, I have no romantic or physical feelings for Hannah and my wife was cleared for PPD a few months ago. Dude, it sounds like your wife is tired of you. Could she be cheating? Something is up there. I'd kick your wife out and let Hannah stay until she gets on her feet. Give her back the money she paid your wife. Do you understand what a huge red flag it is that your wife lied to you and Hannah when she took Hannah's money and kept it for herself? Like, huge. No wonder they never got along. That's because your wife is an idiot. Apparently, she's totally comfortable lying to your face. And Hannah's. And she has no problem pretending not to be married. You should grant her that wish. Yep, she's definitely dishonest. Plus, to add to what you stated, several months later, she's still healing and unable to do household chores. What a crock. Unless there was some major surgery related to the birth, which I'm sure OP would have mentioned if there was, then there's no reason why she can't do tasks around the house seven months later. She's lazy and a liar. I, 28-year-old female, have an older brother who's married and has two kids. My brother and I have always been close and I adore their kids. I don't have children of my own yet. My husband and I have been married for four years and have been trying to conceive for two years now. They often ask me to babysit. I take them to the park sometimes or just hang out with them to give my brother and his wife a break. Everything was great until last weekend. I planned to take my nieces to the park for a few hours. My sister-in-law called me in the morning and asked if I could pick up some groceries for them on my way over. I agree, no problem. When I got to the house with the groceries, my sister-in-law was visibly annoyed. She said I got the wrong brand of butter and the fruit I bought wasn't fresh. She even complained that I was a few minutes late, which was because of the extra stop I made for the groceries. I tried to brush it off, but she kept going, making comments about how I don't understand the stress of raising kids. I finally snapped and told her she should be grateful I'm even helping out. She said she doesn't need my help if I'm going to have an attitude. I told her to deal with her own groceries and left without taking the kids to the park. Now my brother is upset with me for abandoning the kids and not keeping my promise to them. He says I should have just let my sister-in-law's comments slide for the sake of the kids. I feel bad about disappointing my nieces, but I also feel like I shouldn't have to put up with that kind of treatment. And it wasn't the first time I paid for something. She always happens to forget to give me my money back. Not the idiot. What an ungrateful woman. I would have taken the groceries back too. Send your brother a Venmo request for all the other times she hasn't paid you back. Seriously, even if it was $5, itemize each item. I'm sure she's implying she bought the food and is keeping a stash from your purchases. You are the idiot and what a doormat you are. Stop buying things for her if she doesn't pay you back. You give her money, look after her kids for free, and she treats you like crap. Talk to your brother. Say you have a new boundary. She pays you back, and she apologizes before you do any more free babysitting. I don't care how much you love your nieces. It's time for you to stop babysitting and taking them anywhere. Sis-in-law was completely out of line, and your brother is ignoring your feelings and peace of mind. Unless and until they both apologize and understand how wrong and off-base they were. Tell your moron of a brother that you will not be watching his kids again until he can apologize and deal with his wife for the sake of the kids. 
I, 23 female, have a biological brother, 24, and an adopted sister, 27. She was adopted when I was a year old and she was around four. For most of my life, my sister received all the attention from our parents and my brother and I were just there. My parents would bend over backward to make sure she felt like part of the family, which is great, except they didn't bother to make my brother and me feel included. When she was 19, we found her biological family and they have a great relationship now. But I feel like this completely ruined our own family dynamic. Our dad died five years ago and it seems like she just moved on from our dad to the other dad and is also slowly moving on from our family to her biological family. Her biological mom's side also seems to have a problem with us because we're white and my sister is black. So every time we try to be involved in activities, there are always jabs at us. And I think they encourage her to become distant from us. My mom still acts like my sister is the center of our world though. For the last two Thanksgivings, we had to have family Thanksgiving dinner days before because my sister was going to have Thanksgiving with her biological family. The same was true for the previous Christmas. We exchanged gifts by the 20th and my sister didn't even bring my nephew as he was at his biological grandma's. My final straw was a trip we'd been planning in honor of my dad. On the fifth anniversary of his passing, we were going to plant an orchard in a particular African country my dad worked and lived in for years and we visited many times. Planting this was something my dad had planned before he died and had it planned to a T, so we would only be executing his plan. We'd agreed that the fifth anniversary felt like the perfect time. Except now, my sister's biological sister will be getting married around the same time. Not the same day, but it means my sister can only join us after the actual anniversary day. My mom says it's okay, we can plant the trees a week or two later, and she actually said it doesn't make much difference when we plant the trees. We'd still be honoring him, but my sister will only ever get to attend her sister's wedding once. She says it's a week's worth of work anyway, so it's not like we were going to be done on the actual day. This made me mad, and I told them I would be breaking the ground on the actual anniversary day with or without any of them. She said I was being inconsiderate and should think about how this would make my sister feel like she doesn't matter to the family. My sister has been part of our family for the same amount of time I've been, only she can exclude herself. My brother keeps flip-flopping between coming with me to be there for the anniversary or waiting for my mum and sister some days later, and I honestly can't also blame him. Am I the idiot for insisting I'm not waiting on anyone? The trip is in two months. Not the idiot. Chances are something will come up and she'll change her mind and not go at all. Tell mom that it's okay if she wants to wait for sister, since she's the only one mom ever cared about anyway. Let brother make his own choice. Go and continue with your plans. Mom wanting to change plans is not only disrespectful to you, but also to all those in the other country who've been helping plan this on their end. Agreed. It's on the sister as to whether she wants to honor the dad who adopted her. Also, I think it's ridiculous that your family is so accommodating for her every holiday. Yours should negotiate in advance and agree that Thanksgiving is your family's day of holiday and her family can have Christmas or something like that. Expecting you guys to always come second to her bio family is insulting. I, 19 female, have an argument with my mom, 48, over my brother, 27. My brother is now married and has moved out of my parents' house and now lives in his wife's house. My brother always asked for money from my parents even after he moved out. He and his wife both have jobs. My mom usually gives them $3,000 a month out of her 8,000 monthly income, but she gives me less than $1,000. But I'm okay with that because my parents have saved money to buy us both land and properties. I've been working part-time since high school to help pay for my college and to buy myself a nice laptop for studying. There were no problems here until my mother recently stopped working due to health problems. My brother started coming to my parents' house and demanding large amounts of money. He even asked me if I could lend him some money and I ended up lending him some. But he kept asking me for more money and told me to get a full-time job instead of going to college. One night, my father talked about it with my brother, and my brother was mad about it. He stopped coming over for a while, but yesterday he came. He told mom that he needed money, but mom doesn't have any because she used her savings to buy land for me and gave the rest of the money to my brother. So they asked me if I had some. I answered that I only had $15 and had used the rest of my savings to buy a new laptop and a bicycle to go to college and part-time work because they sold my motorcycle and gave the money to my brother. They both looked very upset, and she took that $15 anyway. This morning, my mom told me that my brother is actually in debt because of his gambling addiction. She asked me if I could help him pay off his debt, but I refused because I thought it was his problem and it was a consequence of his gambling problem. 
Now my mom has refused to talk to me. Note, I actually still have some money in my bank account. My father is often working outside the city, so he's rarely seen at home. My parents were rich, but things are different since mom got sick and dad has to work outside the city. Not the idiot. So what's your mom's plan when he pays off the current debt and creates a new one? Your parents are doing him a disservice by enabling him and he's never going to hit rock bottom whilst your parents are his ATM. I mean, why would he stop if they fund it? It's time to go the tough love route and cut him off entirely, OP. Do not give him money and do not leave him alone in the house since I wouldn't trust him not to sell your belongings if he gets that desperate and won't seek help. Does your family seriously think having you quit college so that your brother can gamble away more money is a good idea? Wow, he needs treatment and your mother needs to start prioritizing herself. She needs to take care of her own health and let your brother's problems be his problems. It's not your job to put your life on hold and bail out your adult brother who should have his stuff together at this point.